I know you. I know you did that. Oh, you have to tell me later the price range of the apartment because I thought of an apartment for you in Soho. Yeah. I don't know what it what's what. what it depends if it's seven? over twenty. Oh no. For, 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 you can get the, good, the price that's that, that's doing badly right now is four to five. You can get really good things between four and like six. Doorman, really good. Doorman. Doorman Soho. You should look at my apartment, actually. I'm selling an apartment. I'm, I bought another one in Soho. No, 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 I know. They're rolling. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they were rolling. Sorry. Oh, but, all right, big deal. Okay. So he's looking for an apartment, and I'm no, selling we're, one. You know, yeah, we're making deals. Price. That's yeah. what happens on the shark Yeah. Bethany, you're an entrepreneur. I want to hear about your self-talk. You know what I mean by self-talk? Like, what's that voice in your head when you run up against obstacles, when you're having successes? What is that self-talk that's in your head, whether it's a pep talk? What are, what are you hearing in your mind when you're having successes and failures? What does it sound like? Um, I wrote a book years ago called A Place of Yes. It doesn't mean I'm always in a good mood. It doesn't mean I'm whistling zippity doo -dah, but it means just get it done. I, I am a person that just, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You figure it out. And if you can't figure it out one way, you back up, you breathe, and you come in another way. I just feel like get it done no matter how. So these three words are just pumping through your mind. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah. What do you do when you don't feel like it? When I don't feel, I never don't feel like it. I really don't. You know, that's amazing. I don't know what she means, but I like it. <laughs> Same question for you, Kevin. Uh, you know, self-talk. A lot of us can negative self-talk ourselves out of stuff. Well, I'm not good enough. I'm you know, not qualified. No one gave me permission. Things like that, which we know are not valid. But like, give, me, give us an idea what's inside that beautiful mind of yours. I think if you're an entrepreneur, you, you, you have to deal with your own self-doubts. You have to go past them. You have to decide that you've got a goal and you just keep moving towards it. And it's a lifestyle. When I teach my young entrepreneurs now, because I teach a lot of engineering classes, MIT, Notre Dame, I love them because a third of the class are become entrepreneurs. I tell them, get ready to sacrifice 10 years of your life like you've never done before. You'll have to abandon everything else except the focus and the vision. And actually, the passion you have makes it worth it because it's not about greed, not about money, it's about personal freedom one day. And Successful entrepreneurs have personal freedom. That's worth it. That's really worth it. Do you have like a motto, a mantra, something that you know, pumps through the veins, like that specific language? You know, like I always say it's not about the money, it's about the freedom. That's it. That's what everybody gets right away. They just envision themselves not having to pick up the phone not having to go to work if they don't want to. But what ends up happening with entrepreneurs, they even work harder. I love working, but I don't have to. And that's called freedom. You guys have time for one more question? Sure. Um, talk to me, Bethany, about a pivotal time, a moment, maybe an experience, or a time period in your life when it really affected your business or your personal life. You know, something happened, good or bad, it was a pivotal moment. Can you talk about that? Uh, I went through a very, very, very brutal, harrowing divorce that w was debilitating, and I had to work and be an entrepreneur and be a mom and, and, and have all these partners that have invested me and plowed through and it was really not easy. I created a charity called Be Strong as a result of it to help other women and I just knew that, there, just like business by the way, sometimes you're in the mud and you ha you know that there's a reason it's happening and if you can just get through it, things will be better and you'll have learned. And I was going to say before about what Mr. Wonderful was saying about being an entrepreneur that Kevin was saying, uh, I've learned more from my failures and my successes. I mean, and, and often you, you, you know, you fail when you're smaller and then later when it's bigger, you can use those experiences, those failures when the stakes are higher. So I think that the failures are equally as important as the successes, if not more. Same question with Kevin. Uh, a pivot, was there a pivotal moment, an experience, a transaction that changed your world for positive or for negative? You know, like it was a pivotal time. You thought, okay, I learned a ton from this, or this was, you know, I turned a corner and I went forward. Was there a moment to think of? You know, I've asked many entrepreneurs this, but I remember in my first deal, working and working and working, and then one day waking up and saying, where did all this money come from? Because I wasn't doing it for the money, but it was a public company and the stock kept going up and one day we got acquired and 48 hours later I, from having nothing I was I went wow this is crazy how'd this happen but that's how it happens to you as an entrepreneur you don't care you're doing what you're doing and you're competing and you're running your business and to me it was like war beating our competitors everywhere they went all around the world I just kept getting bigger and I 
bought 38 of them by the time it was over. I love doing that. And then one day somebody bought me and I went, wow, that was a moment, I got to tell you. I'll never forget that. Because I just looked at it and said, this is really cool. I can do whatever I want now. And I went right back to work. Hey, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Let's go check out our next story. I'm John Paul DeGioria. I'm Simon Sinek. Hi, I'm Haley from Paramore, and you're watching Behind the Brand. I'm Dr. Phil, and you're watching. Hey, I'm Jessica Beale, and you're watching Behind the Brand. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? I say one word, progress. I want to just look right at the camera and say that one more time. Okay. If I fail more than you do, I win. Because built into that lesson is this notion that you get to keep playing. If you get to keep playing, that means you get to keep failing. And sooner or later, you're going to make it succeed. The people who lose are either the ones who don't fail at all and get stuck, or the ones who fail so big they don't get to play again.